Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Charlie. We're the Adventure Closet. Today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the beet harvest. The sugar beet harvest. The harvest of beets made of sugar. Indeed. So come along with us. Hi, I'm Liz, and this is Charlie. We've spent the last two years traveling the U.S. and Canada in our minivan Opal. We recently built out our tiny SUV GOAT to more efficiently take you along with us to some of the lesser known hidden corners of the continent. So come along with us as we immerse you in nature, stories lost in time, and discoveries of buried treasures. Who knows what we'll find next? What is the bee harvest? Most people will be a helper Um, And what does a helper do? So I am a helper. I'm most people. (laughs) And I'm out down on the ground uh, working around the piling station. So when our operator is done with them, the dump truck has dumped all of their beets onto the piling machine. Then it is my job to direct them out to the dirt return where they'll get their tear dirt that is removed from the beets that have gone through the machine. I direct them through, I click this button, hold it for a while until enough dirt has gone out into their dump, try to get it towards the back end of their box. And then sometimes the driver will hand over a sample ticket. What a sample ticket is basically means that a sample of their beats from their load needs to be taken to be sent back to the lab to check for the quantity of sugar per pound of beets. And they get paid for the quality of their beets. So what I'll do is I'll go around to the other side at right the right moment, uh, usually on the second lift of the bed of the truck. I'll uh, click the button and it falls into a bag. I put their sample ticket on the side, tie it up, wait for the next truck. Sometimes as ground crew, you'll also be operating the boom. And what the boom is, is when the beets have been unloaded from the truck they're shooting out onto a pile and we're creating a nice even pile that they can stack up on so i'll be taking this uh, 60 foot boom and swinging it left and right building up the corners making a nice strong pile so it doesn't collapse and that can be kind of a fun even mesmerizing job i do enjoy doing that and then once you've built a good line you move the, the entire machine backwards four feet. And between trucks, you are shoveling and pushing beets and dirt out of the way to keep the road, the runway nice and clear. And of course, being very watchful of trucks coming and going, it can be dangerous if you're not paying attention. And I'm a piler operator. And what a piler operator does is they, they're basically in charge of the trucks coming in until they're empty. So truck drives in, I close the back door so the beets don't spill out. I tell the truck to raise up and then you got to raise it to a certain level and you got to kind of keep an eye on it as well because if it's too heavy or if their door doesn't open, you just, there's so many different situations you, you, you need to keep track of. But you, you learn to, you learn to see what to look out for as you do it more and more. Like if something's not right then you tell the truck to go back down otherwise you tell the truck to go up once beats start coming out you tell the truck to go up again once the beats start slowing down and then once the truck's empty you lower you tell him to lower his bed and then you move on to the next truck you got a truck on your right a truck on your left and uh, you can only dump one truck at a time so it may seem very overwhelming but as long as you know what step you're on on each truck, everything's going to go fine. Charlie showed me how to do it this year. That was kind of fun to operate for a little bit and see how it goes. I can definitely tell it would take some getting used to because there's a lot of levers and buttons. But once you get them down. Yeah, and it's not that difficult, is it? No, no. It's just a lot to pay attention to at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I also, not only did I get to get cross-trained in that this year, I also had the opportunity to get cross-trained in the scale house. And I, we still haven't even talked about what the scale house is. The scale house is basically, it's 
this little building at the entrance of the yard and the trucks come in and they get on the scale, they get weighed. I sat at the window and I take their grower card and I scan it, give them a receipt that shows their weight and everything. They go through the piling station and then on their way out, they get weighed out for the, their tear dirt that they have in their truck. The same process, you scan them, give them the receipt. I got to do that for about three and a half days this season and it was kind of nice to be in the heated building. <laughs> you have warm coffee, it was wonderful. If we do return, I think it would be very cool to work in the scale house again. So what to expect? Basically, you want to expect the unexpected. Last year, we had perfect weather. It rained very little, and it was just straight 14 days of work. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. around 13, 14 days of just like, of just bam, solid, get it done. Bam, get it done. And that's the best thing about the beet harvest is... You're getting all this work done at once, so it's a quick way to make good money. But this year, we are on day 20, and we're still here. <laughs> so this was a much longer season. We had a lot more rain. We had a couple of shutdowns for rain, so rain will shut you down. Heat will shut you down. So there's a lot of variables in the harvesting of the sugar beets that can make your season shorter or longer depending expect to be here about 14 days but you usually are signing up for the entire month just in case something you know some weather event or some event goes wrong there is possibility that if you end early that you can ask to be put on a list to work at other stations we didn't do that last year uh we we did this year and i mean we're still here so we're not we're probably not going to get any more work, but we might. <laughs> <laughs> We're expecting to clean up today. We're on day 20. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what to expect with bee harvest. As of this year, the shift is 12 hours a day, uh, usually 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. shift. And that all depends. Some first years have been getting days, but most first year people will be working nights. And it is hard to adjust your schedule to working nights, especially 12 hours a day. And there's there's some things uh, that are not good about working days, too, because everything's closed. You're working 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., so you really don't have time to do anything. We ended up working this season 20, 20 days, days total, and we only had, like, a day and a half break in there. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't give you much opportunity to wash clothes, things like that. So make sure you got enough socks and underwear to get through a very long period of time. Uh, wages. This much per hour for me as groom crew. First years make this much. Second years you make more. The wage actually goes up every year if you come back consecutively. So after your initial eight hours, you're going into time and a half. So um, you have four more hours beyond that since you're doing a 12-hour shift. Now, if you work Saturdays, it's time and a half the whole day. So you get 12 hours of that. Sundays are even better because you get double time the whole day. And those are awesome. So if you can get a couple weekends into your harvest, you're making a good chunk of change just those two weekends that you're working. Uh, we got really lucky this year and got three weekends. But uh, this is what it breaks down to per day if you're working the weekends. And the weekdays. Express is going to put you up in a, either a campground if you have a qualifying camper fully self-contained. If you don't, they will put you up in a hotel. They charge $50 a week per person for the hotel. There will be a commute. We have to drive 18 miles to work and back to our piling station. But it all depends on your piling station. There's some piling stations that are within walking distance. There's also piling stations that may be further than that. So be aware that you will be commuting to and from your hotel or your campground and your piling station. When you get here, there's going to be two things that you need to bring with you for sure. You need to bring two forms of identification. 
to um, get your W-2s and everything filled out at your orientation. And they'll usually let you get your hotel or campsite a couple days before you actually start and that's kind of nice to get yourself settled ready to go. American Crystal Sugar is going to supply you some safety items like your safety hat, a vest, goggles, or if you have glasses you'll get these side shields and some thin gloves. But what we recommend bringing is a thicker pair of gloves. Uh, we'll link what we use below. We have a cheap good alternative because it does get cold and uh, chapstick and lots of layers yeah lots of layers stuff you don't mind getting dirty and stuff you might want to throw away when you're done because it does get muddy out here and you can ruin clothes and shoes so mm -hmm. just make sure it's nothing don't bring your fancy dress stuff dress yeah. warm it does get cold it gets hot um so you need to have stuff with you like extra jackets and some lighter stuff as well. Yes, and your vehicle will be your mobile break room. So uh, during your shift when you get your brakes, you're going to be in and out of your vehicle and you are going to get muddy. Be aware of that. Your your floor in your car is going to get dirty. The outside of your car it's gonna is going to be filthy. filthy. Yeah. Just check out GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there is a scale house where they sometimes have coffee, maybe hot cocoa. It depends on your foreman. Um, there's uh, water in the break room or in the scale house. So you can go to the scale house uh, on your breaks. But if you're only on a 15-minute break, you're probably just going to end up sitting in your car. And you're going to be eating in your car and cooking in your car. You're probably wondering, how do I get this job? And... Honestly, you know, just go to this website here, uh, The Unbeatable Experience. Clever little play on words there. <laughs> and you apply. They require just a background check. Uh, and as long as you can pass a background check, pretty much, you will probably get the job. It's that simple. It helps to apply early for the year. So if you could uh, apply January, February, March then you're pretty much guaranteed a position. The closer you get to the harvest, the harder it is to get you housing. So uh, if you do need a hotel, I would definitely apply earlier. And if you guys would like to help us out a little bit, you can put our names here and our address here, and uh, we would get a referral bonus from you, and we would really appreciate that. <laughs> And definitely, yeah, write that information down. If you're if you're going to do this and you heard it from us, we super appreciate that. But write it down because the time that they take that info is at your orientation. Yeah. So you're kind of in a moment where it's like, oh, where's that address? Where's that name? Yeah, and um, you're not going to sit there and look at a YouTube yeah. video for that. <laughs> we were referred to our friends over at One Adventure at a time. Well, we hope this was enough information for you. We try to make this short and sweet so that you could get a video in that tells you what you need to know. As opposed to our, last year, we did a hour and 40 minute documentary about our entire first year here. So if you want to check that out, we'll link that below. It, it's a long watch, but it's pretty detailed on day by day of what we went through. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'll, we'll, we'll feel, feel free to just ask us anything about this. Thanks for watching. Well, that was fun. Well, that was fun. You really can't beat that. That was unbeatable. <laughs> Bye now. Bye now. <laughs> Oh, you didn't think, you didn't think I'd end this video without another beat truck song, did you? I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear it. Say what? Oh, what? I dropped the beat? I dropped the beat. The beat piling has begun. That's a lot of beats. Biggity, 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 biggity. Who comes the truck now? Trucks. <laughs>
truck, the truck, truck, the guy the truck's in dumping truck, the truck, 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 truck. You kind of get your rhythm down. They've got another beat. Boom. That one truck that you just saw is the only truck that's going back and forth to the farm and filling up with beats. The same thing over and over again. The boom. And it gets loud. Truck pulls on. Some of the trucks are faster than the others. Some of them are slower. Actual beats. Beats, 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 the truck. Charlie's the operator. Air Drop the beats. Drop, drop the beats. Beat truck, beat. Charlie's the operator. Beats. Tear dirt. Dump it. Dump it. Dump it. Dump it now. Beats. Dump it. Dump it now. Beats. Dump it. Drop that beat. This beat is tiny. This beat is big. Look at this little guy just pooping out the beats. Poopy poopy pizza. Poopy pizza.